woman because a woman is hurting. We're so beautiful here. We have wet, nice makeups, but you don't know the story behind the makeup. Somebody's just smiling. I just, before I, I just sat there, I felt today I'm going to minister to a mo woman who is hurting so bad because she lost a baby. Just, I walked in there. I knew that I'm going to minister to a woman who has miscarried twice and almost is giving up. So women, we can look beautiful on the outside, but the inside, we are hurting. Thank you for standing up for the daughters of Zion. And I want to thank you so much and uh, for going through the pain so you could become sensitive to God because you never hear the heart of God sometimes unless you've gone through the pain. Pain is not always your enemy. Sometimes pain is a teacher because pain teaches you to be humble and to love God than yourself. How many know women we are full of ourselves and there's something always God will strip that pride in a woman. God will put you like into ashes to dust. He makes you nothing. So when he raises you up, it will not be about you. It will be about him. So thank you, Pastor Kathy, so much for, the, for this vision, Daughters of Zion. I know many, many women, both in this nation and in other nations, have been touched and affected by the call of God that is in your life concerning the woman in this nation and the woman in other nations. So thank you for being there for these girls. Keep going on. Our prayers, our support is with you and we know that you are called for great exploits. Why don't you appreciate Pastor Kathy for this great, great dream the daughters of Zion. God bless you for being there for a woman who is hurting because the woman who is hurting she does not need to be taught how to wear makeups. She needs to be taught how to keep her heart pure before God. So thank you so much for being there. And uh, as I walked in and you started saying things about me, I also thought about something. I'm also a woman under authority. And my authority was just here a few, more than a week ago, Rain had Bonke. And I want you people, JCC, to know you come from a rich heritage. Your genealogy is great. Oh, come on, somebody. You have a great genealogy. And that's why I say that my seed can never fail. Because my father has never failed. Oh, come on, somebody. You know, the other day, I watched Pastor Alan when he was leading the meeting. And my spiritual father was sitting there and I'm sitting there and I turn to him and I say, you raised me up. I raised him up. He's also raising somebody. Come on, somebody. This is what God loves. Amen. Good morning, daughters of Zion. All right, you may have your seats. Your big sisters have also in the house. They have come. Appreciate your big sisters. Oh, come on, JCC, uh, bigger sisters from FEM, would you all stand? All of you from FEM, just stand. Come on, appreciate them. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. It's wonderful. Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. Oh, God is so faithful. Amen. We're going to have church today, but today I want to speak. Is it okay for me to share more of my heart? Then just preach a, a message or a sermon. Amen. We, we, we're going to have some great, great time together. And I want you to know that uh, I'm so honored to, to have my daughter-in-law. You know, I'm just... Uh, come here. You know, this is my daughter-in-law. She just married my son uh, Saturday by one. She's a top model, an international top model in the United Kingdom. <laughs> and much more than you seeing a top model here, this girl has served me as a nasha in our ministry for more than eight years. She served me in London as one of my ushers. And one of the things that I... You 
want to say hi to these girls. Buona sifiwa. Na kupenda yota. I'm so honored to be here today. Um, I'm out of words right now. <laughs> You know, when you take microphone after um, such general, there's nothing to say. <laughs> Mom, I love you. I appreciate you. And <laughs> come on, appreciate her. Appreciate her. She served me in London for a period and something amazing before I preach, Pastor Kate, this girl, when God brought her into a ministry in London, she told me, I will be a Ruth and you're going to be Naomi, my Naomi. She looked at me and she says to me, Mom, I will never be dated by any man from now henceforth. Until the day you tell me that's your husband. That man, I'll love him from that day and I'll marry him. So every time she served, I kept on saying, God, this is a huge responsibility. Because they are nice boys who saw a molder and they're like, mm-mm. But she kept on to the integrity. Little did I know that God would raise her and bring her in my own home. So I feel so honored to have a beautiful daughter in law with a big heart to serve. Amen. Thank you, Ilona. God bless you. You know, when my, son, when my son told me, you know, by the way, I have also become a grandmother for the second time. Yes, I have a little beautiful granddaughter. She was born on Wednesday during the conference. So I'm so glad. I'm so blessed, you know, I'm so, I'm so excited. You know, yesterday I kept on thinking, Pastor Kathy, you want me to preach? I've already become a grandmother and I want to hold the baby, you know. So, <laughs> so I, I'm so honored, I'm so, you know, when, girls, when it comes to serve, serve God. Just love God for God. Don't, don't serve God for anything. Serve God like you never do anything in life but to serve him. Girls, love God with your hearts. Pastor Kathy, you are associate ministers. Thank you very much. I see Pastor Joan. I see Pastor Jane. You are so amazing, all you girls. Come on, help me appreciate the women, great women of God who serve with this woman of God. Not going much into protocol. Just allow me to go to the book of Exodus. Could somebody, uh, who is going to read? Uh, Pastor Joan, you're going to read uh, Exodus for me? Turn with me to the book of Exodus, the second chapter. That's where we're at. Exodus chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 10. Exodus chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 10. And a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, dubbed it in asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. Verse 4. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. And her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? 
And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me. And I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. Verse 10. And the child grew and she brought him into Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. So she called his name Moses saying, because I drew him out of the water. May God bless his word this morning. You know, many times, Pastor Kathy, I think when women gather together like this, there are specific uh, topics that need to be addressed. Because as I say that a woman is hurting on the inside, but on the outside, she looks good. Isn't that true? And one of, uh, one of, uh, one of our ladies uh, spoke to us and she compared the life of a woman as a life of a donkey. A donkey has one business, and the work of a donkey is to carry roads. Heaps and heaps and heaps. Women, you do notice, whether you are single, married, or whatever status you may be at this day, you know that there is always a burden and a demand put on you. Is that so? So th many times when we come into women meetings like this, there are things we need to address. There are many, women, many women this day who are in serious identity crisis. Right? And those are some of the areas that need to be addressed in the house of God. We have, for example, many women who are so insecure. Do you know them? Even when they find you talking, they think you are talking about them. Because they are insecure, they are dangerous, they are suspicious about everything and anybody. So those are some of the things that needs to be addressed. There is something else that needs to be addressed, for example, number three, compromise. We have too much compromise among, among us women. And let me say this day, what you compromise to gain at a given time, you will lose it. And there will be a price and it will also come with shame. Avoid compromise. Amen. Because he who began a good work in you, he is faithful to finish it. Number five, they also, number four, the women uh, with low self-esteem. Those are some of the things, Pastor Kathy, I would love us to sit together and see how we could address this among us women. Number five, we need to address issues of idleness. There are women who want to be idle. They don't want to work. They hate employment. They hate responsibility because they are idle. They are dangerous. An idle mind is a devil's workshop. That's what the Bible says. I didn't say it. From house to house, with a common disease, mouth, feet disease, they are called go sheep. Because they are gossipers. They are a going sheep. Gosh. Because they are idle. Avoid being idle at any given time. And I want you to know that God will never call an idle woman. If you think you're going to be idle so that you can be in ministry, give me a break. God has no interest of people who have nothing to do lest they do it in the kingdom. God is looking for busy people. God will fish you and call you out when you are busy, not when you have nothing to do. This business of saying, oh, I'm in Akesha, I'm in this meeting, I'm, hey, work, 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 eat your sweat. Be the woman who said the woman, the proverb, the proverb that one woman was idle. She gathers, she does not wait for a man to make her. Baby girl, if you're waiting for a man to make you complete, you're in serious problem. If you're half woman, you'll never become a full woman. Begin to treat yourself with respect. Avoid being an idle woman. I fear idle women. Because when they are idle, they become gossipers. Avoid manipulation. Avoid manipulation. I'm just giving you some topics which I think, I think they need to be addressed. 
manipulation. There are people who love to manipulate people and there are people who love to be manipulated. And how many know the Bible says manipulation is as bad as witchcraft? It compares, manipulation is compared with witchcraft in the Bible. Number eight, there is something that needs to be addressed. Singleness in life. Because it seems we have more women than men. Singleness. Can you be single and yet be happy? Do you know how to make yourself happy? Do you know how to honor yourself, celebrate yourself, respect yourself? So sometimes when we are single, we think we have, it is being single is like you are stigmatized. And that's why you see when you go to your gishags, your mother starts talking about Irona's wedding on Sunday to make you feel upset. But don't be intimidated. If you're a woman of God, it doesn't matter. Even if you are 50 and God desires to give you a man, he will still come your way. Don't go to other people's men. Be a woman of integrity. Be a woman of excellence. Don't admire something that is owned by somebody else. That's a jealous spirit. It, it must be killed in the church. If a man is not yours, don't even look at him. Yours is the best. He's still in the workshop being manufactured. Wait until he shows up. Avoid. Avoid these things, you know. And, and there's something else, Pastor Kathy, we, don't, we are not addressing. Single moms. How many are single moms in here today? Look at that. Single moms. We need single moms to be addressed. Because many, many single moms today, they are walking worthless. Thinking because they got a baby before the wedlock that they are like a devil. I want you to know, you just went ahead of yourself. But that baby will still be born out of you. It is just that you went ahead of time. So don't allow the society to put you down. Walk with your head out. And most of you single mothers, I urge you, do not be ashamed of your children. If a man wants you, let him take the whole package. If he doesn't want your baby, kiss him goodbye. And say, see you another day. Hallelujah. Can we talk today? You cannot separate. So don't hide your babies. So the first time you meet a man and he has an interest of you, the first thing you introduce is your baby. You tell them, by the way, I have a beautiful daughter. Before you take me out, you need to see her. Don't hide your children until the wedding day. Somebody carrying flowers, you're told, you know? And that child whom you hide will suffer rejection till the day they die. Don't hide your babies. Be proud of your children because you got them. And there is a great destiny. Encourage them. Amen. Check how that man looks at that kid. If he looks at the kid funny, tell him, ah, ah. I'm out of your way. Single moms are not even recognized in churches. We have people appointing ashes and deacons and this and that. But single women are not accepted in the church. Particularly the mainstream churches. And I want this to be said. And I, and I thank God if it is being recorded because I, because I want it to be heard. Most of the women, when they take their children, they are asked about their fathers. If the father was there, he would be there during the dedication. So Bishop, what father are you talking about? So some of the children who are born, some of them non-residential fathers, some of them was hit and run, whichever way the kid came into this world, some of them was raped, whatever way the child came, respect those children, honor them, because children are a blessing and a heritage from the Lord. Amen. Be proud of your child. Walk to church with them. 
take them out. Let everybody know you are a mom. When moms are called, stand up with pride because you are also a mother. So many times that we know from the mainstream churches, and this is what I wanted to say, sometimes they will never dedicate children who don't have fathers. Shame on you. Children are a blessing. Jesus did not call for children who had fathers. Jesus said, let the children come unto me, for the kingdom of God is theirs. He didn't ask children to come with their parents. He said to them, do not forbid them to come, but let them come to me. But religious will always kind of stigmatize and push you away. But they have no problem joining your wedding when you are nine months pregnant. Hypocrisy. We need to address some of these things. Number 10, we need to address the character. Because we need the forming of a character. Because a woman of God is not the makeup, it's not her size, it's not the shoes she wears. It is about character. In character, there are very many ingredients, which I don't, I will not. Uh, these are just some topics that I'm thinking, Pastor Kathy, that at a given time, you need to address them one after the other. Because uh, I feel burdened that a women, women need to know exactly where they are at. Number 10, number 11. How do you cope with unfaithfulness in marriage? You love God. You have your spouse. We're not born again. They are unfaithful. They drive you crazy. Church people will address all this manner of sin, but they will not teach a woman how to cope with, with, a, with a spouse who are unfaithful. But those are some of the things we need to understand and we need to address unfaithfulness in marriage. Number 12, there's something that we have been hiding. Children being molested by their fathers, by their parents. Women, we need to address this issue because it is happening. How many know it is happening? And then because your culture taught you that mutumia tawa mutumia ni gotumia, a woman should not talk, you kind of hide the scene and compromise and you kill your child what will happen by the day by the end of the day you will lose the child and the man if a child is being molested the marriage you thought you would keep it will be a monster address the issue address it address it one time when i was doing ohuru park crusades pastor Kathy, a woman walked to me and, I, and, and she says, Mom, I'm going to get saved, but I want you to know I have three children from my own father. My own biological father. I told her, baby, and she told me her mom knows the story. Her mom knew it, and her mom told her never to tell anybody. So that the family name can look good, yet nasty. I told her, now I give you permission to abandon your father and the children. Leave them. Go and start a new life. I know somebody saying that is tough, but she, I could not keep her in that house when her father, own biological father, is sleeping with her. No way. In Akuru, I was preaching, and a woman walked to me, and she said, Mom, I want you to pray with me, because my biological daughter has taken over my husband. My first daughter. These are the kind of gatherings. We need to address these kind of things, Pastor Kathy. And she said, my own daughter has taken me to court, suing me for every title deed, every inheritance, that she wants everything in her name. I joined hands with anger with that woman, and I said a prayer. I said, God, I cause this case to be heard by a woman judge in high court. Because a woman can relate with that. And for sure, the case went to a woman. <laughs> she hit the roof. You are suing who? My mother. What? She says, yeah, she, 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 she didn't know how to keep the marriage. 
I got him. Can you imagine your own baby you got from the maternity home? These are things, they're happening. We may say, but they're happening. They're happening. They're here with us. Why? Because our society has become rotten. All right. These are issues we need to address. If you see and know that your husband is a sex monarch and has a problem, don't even allow your baby girls to sit on their laps with their bikinis. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm not being nice today. We need things to dress. How, how do you deal with this? You come to a meeting, you are looking good, and already your daughter, own daughter that you got. I asked this woman in Akuru, are you sure this, this child, this is the biological father, he said, yeah. In actual fact, we got married and stayed two years before she was born. Later, when she was born, she takes over her own father. This is a common disease in the church. And it is being nursed. Preachers will say don't talk about it. Because we want to look pretty in the inside. And that's why the church will be told you have lost your first love. We don't address this kind of mess. Number 13, some of the things I want to see. Uh, Pastor Kathy, you addressing is uh, women managing their homes. We need to be good managers of our homes, isn't it? Yeah, we need to be good managers of our homes. We need to manage our homes. And we need to be good. We need to be homemakers. Don't make your house nice because I'm coming for lunch. Let it be a lifestyle. Look good, not for guests, but for you. How many know when you are in a neat home, when you have, the environment is good, you're able to talk to God, you're able to be friendly, you can, you can think. You know, you, you don't be a mess. Take good care of yourself. I, I hate to see messy women. Drink with a cup, you put it under the bed, you drink with this, you change your pad, you put it under the mattress. Ah, don't say that. No, 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 no. Don't, don't even go there. One time I was preaching in a crusade in Nyeri and I was given, I, I, I was given a home to stay. And, and the first night, uh, Pastor Kathe had an encounter with demons. Suddenly the wall became a big screen and I saw a dragon and the dragon started speaking to me. And I, you know, I'm never afraid of the devil <laughs> because he's always under my feet. But I was so surprised because uh, of what I was seeing. Then in the morning, I said, this looks like a messy house. I threw out the mattress. I threw out everything. I found this girl who hosted me. She changes the pads and put them under the mattress. I said, no wonder this is the demon's headquarters. <laughs> because the trash that came out of her body a month ago, she's still keeping it under the mattress. And I told them, I, I told her, honey, I love you. You're good. You know how to dress. You are a profession, but I can't stay in your house because your house is the headquarter of demons. Be neat. I told her, come and remove these pads. <gasps> oh, Nicole, <laughs> Ganero. <laughs> Are pads supposed to be under the mattress? Ah, oh, come on, girls. Don't look nice here. In your home, you are chaotic. Be nice. Take good care of yourself. By that, you know, you, you, you have confidence even to stand in public. But when you have hidden a pad under the mattress, <sighs> you walk in, something is smelling, you can't figure out what it is, and you know it's not roses. thing I would love to see women are being addressed is women and ministry. How many know preaching one good sermon does not make you a minister? All right. How many know if Pastor Kathy gave you a microphone, you have the grace to speak? That does not mean, you know, we need to understand about ministry. How many know that God is not raising women to compete with men? We're not in competition. Ministry is not about competition. We're not striving. We're not fighting. We're not 
God is not reducing man. This is a fulfillment of a prophecy given by Joel. That in those last days I will pour my spirit. This is the outpouring season when the handmaiden servants will dream dreams. Amen. So we need to understand women in ministry. There's so much deception. These are the days there's so much deception. There are people, Pastor Kathy, they don't know how to make. Jesus said, come, I will make you become. People want what other people have made, but they don't want to make. They see some nice girls sit singing in, a, in, in, in the worship. They target them because they don't want to go and make theirs. Avoid just people who admired you because you have been made. If they don't know how to go and push, if they don't know how to wash you when you didn't know how to wash, they don't deserve you. People want you because they saw you know how to usher. Oh, come to my church. You were not born an usher. Somebody taught you how to usher. So if they don't know how to make you become, they don't deserve you. Stop being deceived. Oh, if you come to my ministry, if you come to my church, I'm going to give you this. Oh, you're not given the microphone by Pastor Kathy and you are so great, you are so powerful, you're more dynamic. Excuse me. That's deception. And that is a lie that is operating in our city. Women. Women avoid also being used by men of God, by so-called men of God. The other day I was dealing with a case, very complicated case. You know, sometimes I love everybody and I love everybody, but sometimes you've got to watch so much carefully, Pastor Kathy, the people, preachers coming from West Africa, you better keep your eyes open. The other day I was handling of a case of a woman who loves God. She has been stripped of everything. She used to be worth the millions, hundreds of millions. Today, she's nothing. And the first thing I ask her, did you sleep with this man? She said, yes. And this man told this woman, girl, let me help you. You only become when I don't need you. You always follow me like a dog until the day I don't need you. Watch out. It's happening, girls. Wake up from your dream. You know, sometimes, Pastor Kathy, when people sit under authority, they think they are being controlled. You're being protected. It's a protection. They know how to dress. They know how to wear collars. They know how to put on suit. They preach against tithing. But by the end of the day, they will give, say, now there is a seed to a man of God. But we don't believe in tithing. Tithing is old from the Old Testament. How many know Jesus did? The Old Testament was never destroyed. But Jesus Christ bridged from the old to the new. You need to watch out. Don't just follow anybody because he's a man of God and he carries a Bible. Any devil can carry a Bible. Don't be impressed. Don't be impressed. By a so-called man of God. They are all over this city. This city of Nairobi will take the hand of God. And women. Kenyan women are naive and foolish. And some of them stupid. Just follow. Later you are stripped of everything. Then the man says. You will follow me like a dog. Until the day I don't need you. And I ask. Did you have sex with him? He says. Anytime he needs me, he needs me for sex. You call me at 2 in the morning. And I go running. I say, now, there is a binding. The sexual. There's already a tie. That's why he's able to control you. Because he has already penetrated into your life. How many understand when you marry a man, you don't just marry the man, you marry the spirit. When you sleep with a man, you don't just sleep with that man. You also carry and he deposits the spirit that is in him, in you. And now finally she's saying, oh, I was told I need a higher authority. I still have, don't be silly. Did I send you to sleep with this man? You want to beat them. You want to slap them so they can wake up and have some sense. We need to be taught. 
about wolves that were. They are everywhere in our city. Everywhere, everywhere. They are everywhere. Daughters of Zion, watch out. Those are some of the things I would love us talking about. Number 15, I would want us to talk. And Pastor Kathy, I'm addressing you in this service. Talk about women and success. Because many women don't know how to become successful. When success gets into your head, you are destroyed. Where you count yourself, the moment you count yourself successful, it is where you die. Because that is where you will dig your own grave. Can I say, success is the greatest enemy to destiny. Your greatest enemy is success. Because the moment you count yourself like you have achieved, then you are done. Paul says, I have not attained, yet he's the greatest preacher and author in the, in the New Testament. We need to address about women and success. Because I have noticed when women become successful, they don't want church anymore. I have the money, I have the home, I have the car. So what else do I need God for? Can I help you? The moment God to start to raise you up, you will need him than ever before. Because what you get from God must be sustained. That's why people come, receive one miracle, they run away from church, not knowing that the miracle they received, that miracle can die. How many know when Elisha, uh, the, the prophet of God, how many know the baby died? But how many know that the woman came to the same man who had prophesied about the baby? Keep connected even when you are blessed. When God blesses you in daughters of Zion, don't disconnect because now you are blessed. Because that thing sometimes will be sick and it may die as well. But from where you got it from, a word will be spoken again. You'll be given the second instruction. Amen, somebody. There's something I've been wanting to talk about in this country, and Pastor Kathy, I would love you to talk about. Women and adapting children. For example, many, many single women, they are so afraid. Some of them, they have nice jobs, they are of age, but they are so afraid of adapting a child because of the traditions, because of our customs, our culture. Because you have been taught that if you adapt a child, they must inherit. How many know that is foolishness? Let me say something. Some of you even get married and maybe you get married at an age where medically they will kind of suggest it's not safe for you to have children. If you love a baby, you will receive the love back. The baby does not have necessarily to come through out of your womb. Most of you know my very good friend, Pastor Elaine, who from Denmark, who went home to be with Jesus. And one of the things I loved about this woman, she adopted a child in Tanzania when she was a missionary. This child had been burnt, 85% burnt. Meaning, because the, the sister carried the child on the back, and the child dropped from the back and fell into the fire. So he, the sister tried to pull the child and could not get the child out. So the child, she ran for the mother who was in the shamba. By the time they came, the boy had 85% burned. So one leg was left into the fire, one arm. The kid had burns everywhere. I don't know why I'm giving you this testimony. But because that is the most amazing love I have ever seen. So when, because at the time Pastor Yen and Pastor Yens were missionaries in, in, in they were missionaries in, in, in Tanzania. She was breastfeeding her younger daughter, Katrina, who is with us now. She's serving in Kirifi. And what happened is she stopped breastfeeding her own child and took this African Tanzanian boy who has 85% burn and started nurturing and breastfeeding her. Tell your neighbor that sounds like love. This child, 
His name is Casper today. He has undergone 23 operations. You know something. Pastor Eileen, when I talked with her, she told me something. I carried my children in my womb. But for Casper, I carried him above the womb. I carried him in my heart. So Casper is greater than what came from my womb. Since Pastor Eileen went home to be with Jesus, it has taken God for Casper to heal. He's the only person, member of the family, who was not able to speak during his barriers, during his mom's burial. So what am I saying? I'm saying that you adopting a child, don't be afraid. What you give them, you're going to get it back. And those of you who are comfortable in life, why would we be having children on the streets? You can as well adopt children. I have several of them. Amen. And I love them. And you know what? Girls, let me help you another thing. Create a reason for God to bless you. And for God to bless your children. If you don't take care of a child who is in need, it will be hard for you to turn to God in the need when your child has a need. Amen, somebody. So do not be afraid by our customs and traditions of adopting children. You can adopt children even before you are married and you get married with that child until the man get the whole package, me and my child. You don't have to go to a maternity home to get a child to love them. No, you can just get your own children. Okay, let me see, because I want to go to the word. I spoke about number 17, where we have troubled marriages in church. We have troubled marriages. And we have women who are battered. And we have abusive marriages. Women who are abused. And those women need help. And I sense that these are some of the topics that must be addressed in the church. Because unless the church addresses them. And by the way, it's not only the non-believers who butter their women. Even their so-called believers who are abusive men. Can we talk? Oh, you know them? Yes, they're more. They, they, they're abusive men. And the Bible does not quite advocate that a woman be abused for anything. Amen. So we need to see that, uh, and, uh, that being taken care of. So women, we, 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 women, women, you know, there's something else we need to address is a woman must always sit under cover, under authority. Isn't it amazing? When you're not married, you're still under the cover of your parents. When you get married, you move, you just change the covering from your mother, your parents, to your husband. And sometimes we want to rebel against that. Girls, we need help. Okay, there's the parents' authority. We have your husband and we have the spiritual. And how does the modern woman in our society cope with all these things that are coming up, the fashions, the styles, the weight, how do you cope with the, with the pressure of all these things? Women must be addressed so that you don't fight to become a model like Irona. You know, everybody, when they see this girl, everybody think, ooh, I can also be a model. Maybe your body, this girl eats so well. Let me help you. This girl has appetite. She can eat good. And she, she eats everything. You know, some of you will think, oh, I was told not to eat sugars. This one, cakes and ice creams. She's always looking for the way, where is the next cakes? Where, where is this? Where is this? Don't be deceived by the rooks. Because every one of us, we think we must become as tiny as she is to look good. No, it does not matter. You can be still size 24 and look good. And anyway, if you can carry your weight, if you're not asking your neighbor to help you carry your weight, what's their problem? Touch the girl sitting next to you, tell them, I can handle this. 
You don't have to be size 12. You don't have to be size 10. You can be 24 and still be a superstar. Come on, somebody. It is not about the weight. It is how you carry your weight. Oh. <laughs> Would you love to hear some of those things addressed? All right, let me go to my message this morning. Amen. Going back to the text, those are some of the things that I feel, I felt like there's quite a major, major concern that when women gather together, as you have gathered together, that you need to start addressing some of these issues. Now, um, I want to come, uh, I know that this conference has been about uh, a transformed woman. Is it transforming? A transformed one. So, meaning you have already gone through the process. If you know you haven't, don't say yes. So, meaning, because when you have been transformed, it means you have been changed. Have you been changed inside, outside? Do you have God inside you? Do you love God? Do you shine for Jesus? Have you told depression to take seat? And you can arise and shine? Amen. Greet the girl sitting next to you. Tell them she's about to speak to us. Tell her you are looking good. I like your makeup. Tell them nice. Tell them nice things. I like, I like your hair. Yeah. I think it's even good when you don't have a weave. You need to show me your hair one of the times. I tell them, tell them they are looking good. You, you just tell them even your weight, you handle that very well. Tell them I love you even your weight. Tell them they are looking, tell them I love your eyes. You're looking good. Yeah, tell them, if you think their outfit is good, don't lie to them. If you think their outfit is good, you can tell them, I love your dress. Yeah, I love your dress. You know, women, for me to preach to you, you need to tell somebody something. Because there are women who walk up to this place with an attitude. Just because nobody threw them up in the air and spin them around and turn them around in the bed and say, baby, mm, I love you. They are depressed. You've got to know how to make yourself happy. Oh, come on, somebody. And I want you to know I'm your mother and I'm single by choice. <laughs> yes. Tell your neighbor you're good. So when we think about a woman that is being transformed or a transformed woman, today I want you to know that when a woman has been transformed by the power of Jesus Christ, washed and purged and prepared, she it becomes very passionate. She becomes passionate because there is something of the old that is dead and there is something new that comes. I want us to look at Moses' mother. This day I want us to look at Moses' mother. The Bible says, and a man name, and a man. The Bible is not specific to give us the man's name, but what the Bible does, the Bible says he was from the house of a Levite, meaning he was from the priesthood. He came from a house that was priesthood, and there was an anointing upon their lives. But then the man is not introduced, and, the, and neither his wife, but the Bible just says a man. There was a man. There was a man. And now the most amazing thing is that this couple conceived, and they bore a son. And the Bible says, and they saw that he was a beautiful. Tell your neighbor, beautiful. Yes, that which comes from God must be beautiful. We destroy ourselves, but we are born beautiful. We are made beautiful. Beauty is not the size of your nose. Beauty is the inside man, as Peter says. So they saw that the baby was beautiful, and, 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 and now remember that this was a very, very difficult time. So what did they do? They remember that this time that children had been ordered to be killed. So what did they do? They took the baby and hid the baby, the Bible says, for three months. What amazes me is an evil king by the name Pharaoh. Remember that he's not only the pharaoh. Pharaoh was the title of every king who came at that time. 
So there was a certain king, his name was Pharaoh, and the Bible says that this king did not recognize Joseph. In other words, he ignored Israel. If you ignored Israel, you touch the heart of God. So the new king did not know Joseph, neither did he know Israel. Now, this king passed a decree that every Hebrew boy be born should be killed. Ah, are you seeing something? Every boy child being born should be killed. Today, we have the same thing going on, but in a different way. Because if you look at the boy child, where are they? They're in Mwengeki, they're in cults, they're in sect, turban, drugs, name it. It's the same old cycle that is coming up again to destroy the man child. Why? Because of their seed. A boy child carries the seed. A nation would never become without a boy child. Because a woman receives the seed. And hides the seed, but a man carries the seed. So the strategy of destruction of a boy child is as old as the Bible. Now the evil king wanted boys, oh, and notice something. He said, if it is a boy, if, if it is a girl child, save. But should it be a boy child, kill. How many know? A woman you cannot produce by yourself, can you? So even if you are in thousands, you just fulfill Isaiah's prophecy. That seven women will be running for one man saying, God, don't give me anything, just your identity. So the boy child was a target in the days of Pharaoh. And today, I still say that the boy child is still a target in our nation. So the king decreed and told the Hebrew women who are midwives and told them, when these Hebrew women come to give birth, as they sit on the birthing stool, if you see it's a baby boy, press the throat and throw it out. Then the Bible says, but that changes what the king had said. Oh, you didn't hear that. But the midwives, the two midwives feared God. And because they feared God than the, than the earthly king, what did they do? They decided to save every boy child. And when the king called them and summoned them, did I say that when you get, when you see a boy, you push the throat and kill them? Do you know what they said? I love what these Hebrew women said. They said, actually, your honor, when Hebrew women come to give birth, they are different from the Egyptians. I can preach on that. There ought to be a difference between you and the Egyptian woman. You are the Hebrew woman. Because you are from the seed of Christ. There ought to be a difference between you and the Egyptian woman. So they said, when the Hebrew woman comes to give birth, they are different. They are diligent. They are sharp. They are smart. They, they are fast, they are quick, they are so much determination. They have the energy. They push the baby. Before the midwife comes, the baby is born. So it is impossible for us to kill the child. I know today, daughters of Zion, you'll be that wise Hebrew woman who is sharp and diligent, quick and fast. What am I saying? A Hebrew woman, a Hebrew woman is a midwife. And a midwife does not kill a midwife Asha's life. Daughters of destiny, destiny, your greatest assignment here is to bring life among us women. The society is out to kill them. But you are the midwives, you are the spiritual midwives who ought to give hope. So at the time, remember... That, uh, that the king now, this was the first massacre of every boy child. And it's so amazing because in the New Testament, how many remember in the New Testament? Herod, when he was threatened, when he heard there was a king that was born, he ordered that every boy child, two years under, must be done what? 
So the first one was with Pharaoh. The second one was with Herod. What was this thing they feared? They feared the seed of the boy child. That is what they feared. The second thing they feared, they knew that a deliverer would come. Amen. So now we see, we see in the days of Moses, then we see the story repeated in the New Testament. Now, Moses' mother, um, she, when, when they saw that the baby was beautiful, the Bible says, though there was a, it, it was a, a difficult time and every boy child ought to have been killed, the Bible says they hid the child for three months. Tell your neighbor, three months. How many know? Three months. Uh, the, every time you see a number in the Bible, it stands for th something. Three, number three, the Trinity. Uh, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That already can tell you that Moses will survive. So three months. Let me say to you girls, there are, there are times God will cause you to hide your miracle. There are times God will cause you to go take your miracle and hide it for a period of time. It can be three months, it can be seven months, it can be five months. How many know when Elizabeth got pregnant, she hid for five months? Ah. There are times God will give you something and God does not want you to shout it. He will cause you to hide it. Why? Until the miracle matures. Because sometimes we tend to shout our miracles, our things, our stuff, before it is manufactured. And what will the devil do? Some of you started dating somebody. Can I go? Can I, can I become a bit radical now? The moment you are given a date by somebody, you called all your girlfriends, you started telling, telling your girls, you know, hey, this man, you know, he called me and you know what? He hasn't even said anything yet. You know, he's called me and you know. Before you know it, the same girls you told, because the miracle was ma not mature, they got to the men. Oh, there's that sister. Do you quite know her? You need to check. Why? If you would have shut your mouth, and waited for your miracle to mature, you'd have kept it. How many know we have witchcraft prayers in church? Yeah. Oh yes, the moment you start telling believers your staff, they wage war against your miracle. Before you know it, the miracle abodes. There are times you need to hide your miracle so you can preserve it. Until it cannot be hid anymore, then you take it out. Moses was hidden until he could not be hidden anymore. There are things God will cause you to hide. Don't payuka your stories everywhere. Telling everybody your stuff. Some of them are not for you, they are against you. The Bible says the greatest enemies of a person, they are the people of your own house. You dare tell them every story about you. So they can attack you strategically with what you have said. The devil did not know about you. It's what you told him. Watch the people you call prayer partners. Don't dare tell them about your stuff. If God hits it to them, don't tell them either. Because indeed, if they are prayer partners, they will pick it by the spirit of God. So girls, you tend to payuka and tell people you are a miracle. And before you know it, before you know your promotion, somebody has sabotaged your miracle. Wait until you walk into that office. Don't even give a testimony in church until you receive your first check. Wait until the thing matures. Then you can talk about it. Now when the baby could not be hid, why? Because the baby had grown. Three months. The Bible says afterwards, the beautiful baby was put in a basket. Hallelujah, I love that. <clears throat> the mother weaved an ark in, with a reed from the sea and made the basket float in the vanilla. Can I say something that I have said before? I believe, Pastor Kathy, the reason God has saved our nation for years is because the source of river Nile 
is Rick Victoria. And Rick Victoria flew up to Egypt. And because we sustained Moses, we did not drown Moses. God opens the book of remembrance. That is why Kenya is not a Kenya nation in the continent of Africa because of the book of remembrance. We sustained Moses, the deliverer of God's covenant people. We did not drown him. Meaning Kenya, we don't sabotage, we don't kill destiny. We are sustainers. Oh, come on, girls. We sustained Moses because Moses was God's dream. Moses was God's vision. And because Nile preserved Moses, God will preserve the source of Nile, which is right here, Kisumo. Oh, I tell your neighbor, we sustain destiny. I believe beyond any shadow of... We could have been like Rwanda. We could have been like Uganda. We could, we could have been like any other country. But I believe the reason, the reason, and how many know, Kenya had signed, even after independence, before independence, Kenya signed an agreement for 100 years that our water from River Nile will still go to Egypt. The contract has just ended 2000. We hope our government is not going to sign another contract because the, the deliverer has already been born and he has already done his job. So we need now to use our waters. We are sustainers. Anything you do for God, God will always go back to the history and the records and will reward you. God is rewarding us even in times of Tamos, then times of chaos, God has preserved our nation because he remembers they did not, they did not sink the ark. They floated the ark and the destiny of my people. Wow. How many know Israel was in captivity for 430 years? And God raised Moses to stand before Pharaoh and say, let my people go. So Kenya understood destiny. Even before we were born, our nation understood destiny. And that's why God, that's why the chaos that came in 0708 could not consume us. Why? Because the book of remembrance. When God saw River Nile again, and saw the reed of the basket with a knack. And so Moses, he says, no, I need to save Kenya. He sent the angels to save Kenya. Come on, somebody. We are blessed of God. So now, that was God's vision for Israel. Now, the Bible says that with the help of Miriam, Moses' big sister, my question, Pastor Kathy, this time, where was his father? See, the Bible says he was from the house of Levi, meaning he was a priest. When the mother is hiding the baby, where was the father? Why doesn't the Bible say that the father and the mother were hiding the basket? But you see, the responsibility is not on the man. Look, the responsibility is the mother and the sister. Moses had other brothers. But look at this. You will never outgrow responsibility. Yeah. Moses' sister was a little baby. But you watch what she tells King Pharaoh's daughter. Are we doing good so far? So you see, the Bible now talks about the mother and the sister. The father is out of the picture. Don't try to drag a man into stuff. You know you want your man to be like you. God never created him to be like you. You know you want him to be detailed. You want him to think like this. You want him to... When you, when you tell a man like, 
Pastor a baby has been born. Oh, praise God. But Pastor Kathu asked, is it a girl or a boy? What's the name? How does she look? Does she have hair? What's her name? Pastor Alan will say, oh, a baby has been born. Period. The story is over. <laughs> Men are not supposed to be detailed and thorough. That's why you are there to compensate and make him complete. Not compete, but make him complete. That's why he's chaotic. I said the other day, they even have no sense of, of, of neatness. He will throw one socks outside as he's coming out. He throws one shoe. He goes on throwing the other thing. He throws the underpants. So you keep picking and picking. And, and you think he's going out, to outgrow that? Love him unconditionally like God loves you. What you can't change, just keep it. And work with it. <laughs> So Miriam and the mother, we seeing them in the picture. I want to say, when it comes to children, have you noticed, even baby girls, they always have a doll. They are breastfeeding. They are singing to the doll. Eh? They are rapping. Can I change your diapers? Do you need nyo nyo? <laughs> Did you do that when you were young? You're born with it. You can't divorce it. I get so upset, Pastor Catherine, when I hear women wanting to become lesbians. What is a lesbian? A woman is born with that nature of nurturing. That's how God created us women. You are not, married, you are not born to get married to another woman. It's madness. Anything that is anti-God and anything that contradicts the word of God it does not matter what it is. You've got to hate it. Now we see the little girl is with the mother. And the Bible says as the mother was hiding the baby into the now Moses' sister, she stood afar, she stood at a distance to see what should happen to the baby, to see what would happen to Moses. Let me say this. Nothing just happens. Because the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Nothing comes your way by mistake. Anything that comes your way, it is ordered for you. Now, look at this. Now, you know, we all know that God is the God of times and seasons, isn't it? Now, Pharaoh's daughter, as they are hiding, they have finished hiding the baby in the house. The baby has outgrown. Now, they are hiding the baby at River Nile. Guess what? God orders the steps of Pharaoh's daughter to come to swim. To come to swim. At what river? Oh, you are getting it. And also she comes with protocol with her maiden servants, her security, and they discovered a little ark that had been made and she said she wanted to know what was inside. Mm -hmm. And when they opened the basket and found the Bible says she heard the baby cry. And she was moved by compassion. That is the heart of a transformed woman. When you hear a need, you are moved by compassion. When you hear somebody crying in distress and in pain, you are moved by compassion. So these daughters of Zion, as we wind up these daughters of Zion, you better know that being transformed is hearing a cry. When a baby cries, when a need in JCC, when there is a need, you better have ears that will hear. So she, they heard, she heard, and because she was mature, she wanted to act. So I love one thing about uh, about about um, about uh, Moses uh, Mo, about Moses' sister. You know now, she they are busy with the mother. She's distancing herself just to watch. How many know? Sometimes when you this is good. I love this. When you start stand from a distance, you become a watchman. So Miriam, no wonder she became a worshipper. She was a watchman. 
She watched at a distance. If Miriam would have been at the same spot with the mother, she would not have been able to see far. But she saw a distant, so she was able to get a quick word. Ha. So those of you that are surrounding Pastor Kathy, don't think that being next to her is the anointing. The anointing is when you stand at a distance so you could watch. Because when you can watch at what is about to befall her, you will be able to come up with a quick strategy. So Miriam's sister, she did not stand together with the mother. Uh, you don't stand with your mother all the time. No, you need to be distant so you can be a good watchman over her. So she distanced herself. And as she was standing, now uh, they picked the baby. She saw Pharaoh's daughter and she saw everything. What was happening? How comes that she was able to say? When they picked the baby, she came to Pharaoh's daughter and said, can I get you a nurse for the baby? Can I get you a nurse for the baby? Listen, she goes get her mother. She did not say this is the Moses mother. She says this is a nanny from the Hebrew women. Why? Because she watched it. She stood at a distance. Stand at a, as a distant. If you see an intercessor always wanting to be a, next to a man of God, they are not called to be intercessors, they are preachers. Preachers love microphone. Can we talk? Preachers a microphone. But an intercessor is a quiet underground ministry. A ministry undercover. A ministry of an intercessor should never be recognized in JCC. Because the moment you say so and so is an intercessor, you expose. So now the devil knows where to target. I never, Pastor Kathy, at any given time, acknowledge our intercessors. Because they are undercover. So if you are an intercessor here in JCC, how many of you are intercessors in JCC? Now you are scared of raising your hand. You don't know what, you, you don't know what your mom is about to say. You are not supposed, listen girls, even when the service is going on, you should never sit in front. You should be dispatched everywhere. Make sure one is at the balcony at the end. Another one there. Another one there. Another one in the middle. Another. Don't sit like sheep together. You'll be killed with one stone. Intercessors ought to be spread out. Don't sit together. At mama, 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 shut up. You are doing nothing. You're not here to listen to service. You're here to do covering prayers. So that every devil, every witchcraft that walks into the house, you can smell it, you can discern it, you can tell the devil, take your seat, I'm going to fight you, you don't need a preacher. But you want to come like a bunch of, we, we intercessors, shut up. Interceding for what? And you want to come when the door is open. Be here at six. Walk around the JCC. Walk around the parkings. Speak to every territorial spirit. Bring down strongholds. When the hall is open, target yourselves. Position yourself in every corner. One intercessor there. One intercessor. Do you have an intercessor there? And there? Okay. Do you have an intercessor there? And there? Up on the balconies? Do you have another one there? And there? You are an intercessor? Take your Bible. Sit at the back. And you take your Bible and your handbag, sit at the back, right at the back. That's what an intercessor does. So as I'm preaching, you're interceding. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. She didn't come to see. She came to cover. Oh, come on, somebody. God has called you to be a protector of the anointing. The reason I can speak boldness is because these are my spiritual children. And I've got to teach them ministry. 
So everybody who is now sitting there behind Pastor Kathy and you are in intercessor, you are already disqualified to my standard. Every one of you. Every one of you. What do you need to do? From tomorrow, don't come and sit. Your work is not to sit and hear or see. Your work is kuraba shakata raba sanda. You are supposed to do covering prayers. How many know that there are devils who have risen in the end time? Men of God needs more protection than ever before. Don't be impressed by people who come in makeup. Some of them are witches. But we want every devil to know greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Every devil will be subject. Every evil power will be subject to the anointing of the almighty God. A time has come. There are no more gimmicks in our churches. Our ministries, if they have to stand, we need watchmen standing on the wall. And that's why in Jesse, from tomorrow, my God, I, if you dare, if you are an intercessor here, you dare go home after this service, I'm going to come back and slap you. Because after this service, I want you to remain and you see how from tomorrow you're going to do effective prayers over those balconies everywhere, even outside. Can I hear a better amen? It is not necessary for all the intercessors to come inside. Should the, should the enemy invade, we are all done. We need medium sister who will stand at a distance watching Pharaoh's daughter coming down to swim so that she can come with, up with a strategy. Come on, girlfriend, give somebody a high five. Tell them, I'm going to be an intercessor. You think it's a joke for you to have a handsome man like Pastor Alan preaching here? He's a target of every devil. But I want every devil to know that devil is a liar in the name of Jesus Christ. From the genealogy to the little one, they are all covered in the name of Jesus Christ. No weapon fashioned against him shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. No stone will bring him down. He will keep going. Hi, come on somebody. Give God a praise. You all think like, oh, our pastor is so handsome. He's so cute. You need to cover him. You need to cover him. Do you want him to preach coming 20 years? He needs your covering. He does not need your compliment. He needs your covering. Sit down, sit down. Tell your neighbor, she's talking about medium sister. I don't know how I got out of this. I have no apology to make. I just told some of the sisters who are asking me about this prophetic thing. I just hit on it. I, I never intended to speak about medium sister, but if you are called to be medium sister, don't sit near. So you have a good view. So before Pharaoh comes down, every step she takes, you're already interceding. Moses will not die. Moses will not be killed. Moses will live. Moses will complete his assignment. We need you. To stand at a distance. I love our sisters who, who are serving Pastor Carter with water and everything. That is not assignment for everybody. That is only one. The others cover the building. You are in a territorial here that has Hindu roots, gods. And you want to sit in church and be cute to hear, oh, we were blessed. Intercessors, hear me. You need to be getting tapes. Intercessors, you need to be getting tapes because you cannot do the two at the same time. So when Pharaoh's daughter takes one step, shut her up. She takes another one. That is the duty of a medium. You know, another day, I looked at something 
and not say where we were. The president was inside the house. The vice president was inside the house. The prime minister was inside the house. I also, being a prophet, I was in the house. I looked around and I said, should anything hit this home, Kenya will mourn for a lifetime. Because every leadership is here. You should not be in the same place at the same time. We do not fight. Our battle is not carnal. Our battle is spiritual. This area, even the building you are at, is a building that will need constant, constant intercessors. Why? Because it was a territory that is marked. If you don't know what I'm talking about, after the service, turn around behind you. What stands there? Huh? A temple. And so you think they are believers. Like, oh, thank God you speak in tongues. Huh? How many know that is war? Two kingdoms against each other. And Miriam is still sitting in the service, listening. Miriam even knows what shoes Pastor Kathy had. Miriam should get a tape because her duty is not a service. If this ministry was stunned, Pastor Kathy, you need Miriams who will not surround you and celebrate you, but will go on their knees 24 hours round the clock. That's what you need. Put your hands together if you know I'm speaking something. Gara, you all know, geographically, spiritually, market is where every idol temple stands. So it will take spiritual warfare for us to have the Indian communities here. But some of you want to sit and be nice. I say, oh, I'm an intercessor. Even when people come dancing and the Holy Spirit is falling down, you know, you want to come and lay down here, you don't know your work. You're not supposed to sleep here. You should be sleeping at Jamuhui where we have parked cars. There. There. Somebody Right now, do we have any intercessor at the gate? Why? I'm coming another day. Pastor Kathy, I'm coming one of the services because I need to teach. Coming to JCC. I'm going to teach. I don't want you to be surrounded, Pastor Kathy, by beautiful women. But you don't have watchmen. You don't need beautiful superstars. You need watchmen. So the anointing can keep increasing. And so you can fulfill your place of assignment. You don't need cute people. Honey, listen to me. Pastor Kathy, I have kept the same intercessors for 30 years up to today. They are not even known by anybody. During the conference, before the conference, Knowing that my spiritual father was coming, they waged war. One of them sent a note and says, Mom, we want you to eat. We want you to do everything and take it easy. But we are sensing an opposition of your father, Reinhard Bonke, coming into the country. But we are in prayer. They moved. Listen, intercessors. They moved to Nairobi Primary School. And people are saying, oh, the anointing, the preachers are great. It's not the great preachers. It is the underwork that has been done. It is the underwork. The preacher does not have to stand and fight devils with a microphone. You ought to fight every devil for the preacher. Don't be cute and nice. Pastor Kathy immediately, Pastor Bonke landed. He told me, Teresa. 
I went to the airport and they told me, Reynard, you are not coming out. We have not, you are not booked from this city. You are booked 100 miles away and your flight is about to take off. Pastor Bonke told them, listen, me, I have to be in Kenya tomorrow. I don't care what happens, but I have to be in Kenya. Why did he come? Because an intercessor who did not sit next to me stood at a distance and saw hindrances and starting paving away, paving away. Intercessors, the day you need approval from Pastor Alan, Pastor Kathy, the associate pastors here, you are out. Because you are not an intercessor. You want to carry her bag? You are not an intercessor. You are hostess. Can we talk? This is the only kind of a service I can kick foolishness out of the girls. You know women, we love sticking, sticking to people. No! Don't stick to her. Make her preach for more years. Let these daughters of destiny have over 10,000 followers. But it cannot be done if you want to sit here and be cute. What you don't do in the secret... She watched Pastor Kathy and she saw Pharaoh's daughter. So she got a revelation. I will tell her, I will get a nanny for her. And because the baby looks like a Hebrew baby, I will tell her if I can get a Hebrew mother. So she went to the mother and brought the mother. And she says, this is your nanny. Miriam's sister was about nine years old. There are things that you cannot know unless they are revealed to you by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Am I saying something? Is it okay for me to disorganize everybody in JCC? Not without you being offended, with you being offended, so you can outgrow foolishness. So you, did you say you are transformed? Are you transformed? Have you failed a test? Which test did you fail? Oh, intercessor, so your neighbor, don't be nice and cute. I'm happy that I can speak these things because the ministry is sustained by intercessors. And an intercessor should never, ever be known in a church. Never. Never be known. Because the moment they are known, they become, Pastor Kathy, an enterprise. Instead of them fulfilling the assignment of God, they become an enterprise because people take prayer requests to them because they are intercessors. So they form ministries called Daughters of Zion International Intercessory Prayer Group. That is what you will birth. But if you can understand that this vision is going somewhere, we need mediums. And Pastor Kathy, I'm going to come to this house. I'm inviting myself. I'm going to come. <laughs> I'll not say when I'm coming so you don't miss the service. I'll make sure you come, you take your seat, and then I will mess you up. Say, <laughs> so she's still our mom. We love her. Tell your neighbors. Yeah, just love her. Tell them, she's our mom's mom, so we still love her. So Miriam, after following the Pharaoh's daughter and getting the nanny, and the mother came, and I want you to know that this was divine. 
God ordered it because God had a dream. God had a vision to preserve. And I want you to know that when God orders a dream, nobody can kill the dream premature. So uh, the, you've got to understand, I wanted you to understand your assignment here. Because there's something when people understand the assignment because we're going to have a powerful church and a powerful ministry. Now, I, I want you to know that um, Pharaoh's daughter received Moses. Baby Moses has gone to the king's house. Ah, no matter how, let me help you somebody today. If you have a dream and a vision from God, it doesn't matter how many people will, uh, will kind of surround to fight it. It will still come to pass. <laughs> Listen, no witches, no witchcraft, no psychics, no magicians, no astrologers, no devils can fight what God is preparing. The devil has no power. But I want you to look at this. The same house that ordered baby boys, children to be killed is the same house that raises Moses. The house that tried to destroy you will be the same house God will use to nurture you. The same boss who has tried to intimidate you will be the same man that God will use to usher you to your next assignment. So the same house Moses is taken into the same house that ordered every boy child be killed. And now the same house is nurturing the vision of God. The dreams of God. That's why the devil will always pay now, this is pay time. The devil is paying for every boy child he killed. Not knowing the savior is intact. In the same house. Sleeping on the golden beds. Being nurtured. Shopped at. Being given everything that he ever needed. May God help somebody to know that what was meant to destroy you. God will turn it around. God will turn it around. And it will be the same, same thing that will God will use to bless you. What am I saying? Even that job before they fire you. God will use them to sharpen your skills. You will use their computers. They will give you their laptops. They will give you everything. They will take you to college part time. And then they will say, oh, we, 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 don't, we don't even like you. You know what? They have already equipped you for your next assignment. So all you can tell, mm, goodbye. Thank you so much for nurturing me. I'm a savior. I'm a deliverer. I carry something inside me. Amen, somebody. So Mo Moses' mother was hired. She was hired. And she was not hired for free. That's a good place for you to say amen. She was not hired for free. She was hired and the Pharaoh's daughter said, I will give you your wages. Name it. And that time she's detached from the child. She says, for me to be anybody's nanny, I get 100,000. She was told, you already have the check. Come on, somebody. Little did they know, the same woman is the same woman who had pushed Moses. And now she's on payroll. Who? Somebody didn't hear this one. She's on payroll because she carried a savior. She carried a deliverer. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> so now, she nurtures the baby. And when Moses, I don't want to finish without you taking this one. When the baby had matured, the Bible says, she brought the child back to Pharaoh's daughter. Did you get that? Because I'm about to say something to make you upset again. <laughs> so you better catch the good thing first. <laughs> and I love preaching to upset people because 
they go where God wants them to go. But preaching to cute, to nice, cute girls, they always say, she had brown shoes. I didn't know brown could match a brown skin. When she had nurtured the child, when the baby had matured, she brought back the child to Pharaoh's daughter because officially she was not the mother. Officially, she was hired as a nurse. Listen, you cannot name something that is not yours. Moses up to this time had no name. So when she received Moses, she named him. And she said, I will call him Moses because I drew him from the waters. I have slapped your understanding. She had no right of naming Moses. She was hired. Nannies don't name children. <laughs> Nannies don't name children. Because what you hire, you fire. So she had to take the child to the official birth official mother who was Pharaoh's daughter. And when she got this kid in her arms, then she said, ah, I'll call him Moses because I drew him from Nile. Pastor Kathy, these are dangerous days. People want to name children They didn't raise. People want to name babies that are not theirs. Are you crazy? One of the girls who grew up in our ministry, she's out in the U.S. I disowned her because she got some funny people on who are doing funny ministries and they named her. I told her, I have never named you that name. So if you carry that name, you better know. Because then I came to understand, Pastor Kathy, I was a nanny. I was not a parent. Oh, now you're getting it. I was her nanny. I was her maid. She never received me as her parent. So she looked for other people to name her. She has cried for years. And I told her, as long as I didn't name you, I can handle that. There are people in ministry who will make us nannies. Full stop. Children are named by their parents. Children are named by authorities. Pastor Kathy didn't come and tell me about the daughters of destiny. She did not name herself. I named her. And that's why she can call me any time. We could not have a women's meeting because she had to have a women's meeting. I named her. So I know I'm res responsible and countable and answerable before God concerning her life. What I'm saying, she did not have Bishop McCredon here to come and name her. He's a visitor. Oh, can we talk? Oh, don't tell me, oh, I got a prophecy. Oh, by so so, and they told me, shut up. You are named by your parents. I don't care what prophets they are. Prophets can only confirm. Prophets confirm what your parents already know about you. Your, your spiritual daddy, Pastor Alan, I remember somebody told him, 
a great prophet from South Africa, MacDonald, many years at Kenyatta Conference Center. You will be a pastor. He said, no, thank you. Me and my mom, we are so winners. You missed it. Until the time came. When JCC was barely seven members, Pastor Kathy and Pastor Alan, they came to me. And I named the baby. God never pays for what he has not ordered for. You know, this crazy wild things of getting yourself names. Huge names. The other day we had a woman, she had huge titles that scared me. She said, I, aren't you giving me the microphone to give a, a testimony? And the moment she walked in, can I, can, can, can I just say this so that you can learn through some foolish people. She came in, she said, um, can somebody give me a seat next to mom? I'm a bishop. So, I came in and I, and uh, I've got to sit next to her because of my titles. She has no ministry. But she's a bishop. So, as the service progressed and it was coming to an end, she sent one of the people with a note. I see mom is winding the service and she has not remembered to call me. Never provoke a prophet. Because when that thing now comes out, you regret. So I, I folded the note and I said, Lord, please. I refuse to be a prophet right now. I refuse to give this girl a piece of my mind. I heard a note. I, I walked down and I called a few of the ministers. And I told her, oh, you got nervous that the service came to an end. Yeah. Yeah. I, w I thought you, because you in introduced the people from London and from the U.S., I thought you were going to introduce me. I said, you know, your title scared me. You are a bishop. I'm a servant. My work is to wash people's feet. But because your title was too big for me, I thought I will reduce you for you to stand on my platform. I told her, honey, are you crazy? Are you mental? <laughs> How many know the nice thing now is dropped? I asked her, if I say, Bishop Kitonga, what do you see? What? You see redeemed, yeah? If I say, Bishop Karyuki, what do you see? So I told her, baby, if I say your name, what do we see? She says, oh, you don't understand. I say, I thank God I don't understand. <laughs> Listen, don't give yourself names. Don't give yourself names. I want to say today, somebody is about to go out of this place with a miracle. As we finish this great conference with daughters of Zion, transformed woman is a passionate woman that hears the cry even of a baby. I want you to know as you walk out of this house today, the almighty God will give you a new name. I prophesy, you're going to come out of this great conference with a new name. If people knew you as a drunkard, they will see a new name. God will say, because I drew her out of the rivers that were drowning her, I give her a new name. If people called you a prostitute, God the Father is about to give you a new name.
If you are given a name attached to poverty, I prophesy this conference, you are walking out of JCC with a new name. If people named you famine and drought, I prophesy at the end of this sweet daughters of Zion, you are coming out with a new name from Jehovah. You'll be called by a new name. If you came here judged, condemned, if you came here sinner, God is about to give you a new name. You walk out of that gate of JCC with a new name. God will say, I saw her sins and I drew her from sin. Now I give her a new name. God is about to give us an identity. If you came here and your name was shame, disgrace, miscarriage, sickness, disease, poverty, borrowing, God Almighty is about to change your name and give you a new name. A transformed woman will always have a new name. You cannot keep the name you used to have in the days of torture, in the days of drought, in the days of famine. I want you to know that heaven is opening. Rain's about to fall. You've been transformed. You've been taught God. And now God is saying, I have drawn the daughters of Zion. I'm giving them a new name. If you are defeated, God will call you victorious. If your name was shame God is about to give you a new name raise your hand towards God and say God I want to walk out of this service with a new name come on somebody God is giving you a new name come on somebody come on somebody get tired of, of disgrace shame and everything that surrounded you God is saying I'm, I'm drawing you out I'm, I'm pulling you out of all this I'm pulling you out of poverty I'm giving you a new name I'm giving you a new name come on somebody God is giving you a new name if you know it if I were you I just say God, I start to receive a new name. This is a women's meeting. Transformed women. They come and their names are changed. Destiny is reversed. My God, I wish I have a, a women who know how to reach out to God and say, God, I refuse to be in this conference and return back home with the same name. I was here on Wednesday. I was here on Thursday. I was here on Friday. I was here today, Saturday. And tomorrow you come with the same old name. Come on, somebody begin to reach out to God and say, God, change my name. Change my name. I refuse to borrow anymore. I refuse to be a beggar. Come on, somebody. Don't be cute don't be nice raise your voice to God and begin to speak to your father in heaven my God my God my God God is drawing you out of pain God is drawing you out of disgrace you have been despised you've been rejected you've been walked on but God is saying I'm giving you a new name you shall be known by the new name my God my God I don't know whom I was sent to speak to this morning I JCC but I just hear God say I'm about to give them a new name the Bible says Isaiah said you shall be known by the new name come on transformed woman you shall be known by your new name you shall not beg anymore you shall not hunt for married men anymore you put value on yourself God is about to give you your own come on your struggles are coming to a new to an end God has given you a new name speak to God this morning speak to God speak to God come on raise your voice speak to God Oh, refuse, refuse to, this to be another service. Refuse this to be an ordinary service. Refuse this to be the same, same daughters of Zion. Say, Lord, I'm sick and tired. You've got to change my name. I've got to have a new name. My God, I'm sick and tired. You've got to be sick and tired. You don't need attention from men. You need attention from your father in heaven. Come on, somebody. Begin to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Let everything that has breath praise his holy name. Speak to your father. I don't know what your condition was. I don't know how you came. Pharaoh's daughter said, I will call him Moses. Because I got him out of the water. God is saying, I'm going to give you a new name. 
because of where I got you from. Shikarabaka sonda roboko shaya. Ora sokorabashanda. My God, today, let woman come out of this service with another name. My God, a new name. A name only you can give because it is only you who can be God. Shikarabashanda, my God. Rokoboshanda rabasia. Jesus. Get tired of your old names. Get tired of what they called you. They called you unlovable. They called you rejected. They said you will never make it. They say you will never mount to anybody. Come on, somebody. If you can raise your hands and voice to God and say, Oh God, God, I come here once again. Change my name. Give me an identity. I'm tired of being named by people by their opinions Jesus Jesus name somebody today give them a new name God Shikarabashanda oh God pray somebody one minute pray then we are done push somebody you cannot go home the same way you came Refuse to be abused. Singleness. Refuse to be abused. Past mistakes. Past failures. God. Let's give you another name. Jesus. Name a woman today. God. Somebody HIV. Let them have a new name. Jehovah Rapha. I'm the Lord that healeth your diseases. Jesus. 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 Father, we bless you. Father, we praise you. Jesus, we honor you. We refuse to go back home barren. We refuse to go home empty. We refuse to go back the same way we came. We are walking out of this house with a miracle. can stand this can stand Pastor Kathy I've taken so much time I never intended to take so much time but I thank God because I feel like I said what God needed me to say I want to just say a prayer with only two people then everybody else I'm going to do a general prayer and I know that God has done it for you. How many of you want God to change their names? God bless every one of you. People knew you by your conditions. People knew you by what you were going through. People knew you think Pastor Kathy, I said this one. Our society has a way of naming us by what we're going through. Have you discovered that? The prophet, when the prophet asked what could be done to the woman who was a widow who had made a room for him. Do you hear the introduction they gave her? They say, 
her, she is barren and her husband is old. That is how our societies define us. They define us by our circumstances, our situations, what we are going through. That is how our society names us. But this day in JCC, you are not men's opinion. You are God's opinion. You are walking out of Daughters of Zion this day with a new name from Jehovah. And God will get the honor because he will say, I drew her out of poverty. So I call her victorious. I drew her out of this. So I call her that. I drew her out of this. So I call her that. Put your hands together and bless God. Can I, I don't want to apologize for taking so much of your time. Did I teach you something? All right. Let me have a woman. There was a very mysterious death of a child. Come, honey, come here. The reason God wants to do something in that woman's life is because Pastor Kathy, it's like people blame her for the death of the child. She's not healed. Just stand right there. Just stand. One of you, it's hard to convince your people about the mysterious death of the child. your child. Women, can you imagine? Hurting because you lost a child and hurting because you go through something. Conspiracy. Today, I break the spirit of conspiracy in the name of Jesus. Your family, people have tried to stigmatize you and blame you for the death of this child. But God is saying today, I have come to vindicate you. Please pass the sweet hands on them. Lay hands on them. I want every woman to raise their hands. If you know the pain of losing a baby, just carry them in your heart and begin to intercede for them. Just pray for them. Just pray for them that God will pour the oil of joy. And heal every wound in their hearts. In the name of Jesus. Just pray for them. Just pray for them. And we want the truth to come to every family member. Those who talked. Those who spoke. Those who told them in the hour of their need. When they needed a hand and a shoulder to cry on. Somebody sabotage and try to destroy them. And God brought them to the daughters of Zion that he may pour oil of joy and reverse the pain in the name of Jesus. Oh, reward them. Oh, reward them. Wipe away their tears. God, in whatever the circumstance that brought the death, God, there is nothing you cannot remove. Do it for these women. Heal them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Let them come out of JCC with a new identity. Knowing they are not murderers. I curse every spirit of depression. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray. They will be healed today. As your ministers, Lord, put their hand on them. Pour the oil of joy. Reverse the pain of death and let this be a new day and a new season in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you. I want to also 
the same people who talked. And the same people who opened their mouth in the day of your pain will come back to you and apologize. Come back and apologize. Can they go back with a new name? Oh, come on. That's what Daughters of Zion is all about. A woman being restored. I want to do this just because the Holy Spirit wants me to do this. I want you to listen carefully. There's a woman, twice, twice, she's been pregnant, but twice she has miscarried. But I have a little problem because in the family, there are strange things. Strange things. Strange things. If you're that woman, I'm saying you come quick. Come quick. And as you come, name every baby you want ever wanted to have as you come. Name your children. Name your children. Name your children. Listen, this doesn't bother me, but one of your family is so involved in witchcraft, but I don't care. I don't care. Witchcraft has no power over your life. But the only problem I have is because some of you, some of these women standing here, words have been spoken by authorities over you. That's what I want to reverse. With Pastor Kathy's permission, I'm going to stand as an authority. And break every word that has been spoken over your life. Isn't it amazing, Pastor Kathy? When words have been spoken over JCC family, either by the authorities, their families, you are their authority. You can undo what has been done. And now, Pastor Kathy, I want you to stand here with me. I'll ask all of them to stand. And you're going to reverse. How many of you words have been spoken over your life by family? You. Okay. Pastor Kathy, for this particular woman, I want you to reverse the word. In the mighty name of Jesus, raise your hands towards her. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are God. You are matchless in your worth. The Bible says, who is it that says, and it comes to pass, when the Lord has not commanded it. So right now, we take back everything that has been spoken over her right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we reverse it. In the name of Jesus, every curse is broken. In the name of Jesus, she starts anew. She has a new name from today, right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Name her, a mother. You are a mother in the name of Jesus. We speak blessings over your womb right now. In the name of Jesus, you shall bring forth in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Covenant. Father, we speak to covenant and destiny right now to get into the womb in the name of Jesus. For none shall be barren in Jesus' mighty name. Bring forth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Name, name. Father, we call forth precious. Oh, let precious come into that womb now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your manifestation. It is done in Jesus' name. Thank you for precious. Father, we speak forth to grace. Grace, hear ye now the word of the Lord. Come to her womb right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for grace, Lord. 
Father, we call Cynthia and John in the mighty name of Jesus to come into that womb now to the glory of your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If your husband left because you didn't have children, I would be afraid of praying with you right now. I would ask if you want the marriage to continue, I, th I think here we'll need, does he have another family? Does he have, is he, is, is, what is going on? Do you know some of these things, Pastor Kathy? Sometimes we, we say prayers too quick because, you know, this kind of a miracle will need to, she'll need a man to have the baby. And, and I would fear to say a prayer for her. Because definitely God will open her womb. And I know that in the day of judgment, when I stand before the throne of grace, should she conceive this child outside marriage, I'm also countable. So it's more than asking for a miracle, but it's also understanding the nature of the miracle. So do you want this man in your life? That can tell you, maybe you can sit with Pastor Kathy after the service because he's not throwing you out because of children. She has already two, two children. So saying, if you don't get another child, he's walking out of you. He, al he has always wanted to go out. It's not the children, honey. He just wants to go. That's an excuse. So I think you know, what we need to do is sit for counseling. Sit with her. Father, we pray that every bitterness, every anger in the name of Jesus Christ will leave. I call that man from backsliding. Satan, the blood is against you. I call this man back to the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, God Almighty, he cannot walk away from the vows that he has made to us, this woman and her children. God, I call him back. I call him back to his senses in Jesus' name. That's no problem. You know, we have one, one of our girls here. I don't know if she's in this service. She used to be epileptic. And God healed her just in one of the service. Father, raise your hands. Epileptic is, epilepsy is just a spirit. Come on, that's why we're in Daughters of Zion. Pastor Kathy, take authority over the spirit. Right now we rise up against you Demonic spirit of yes. sickness and disease Calling yourself epilepsy We rise up against you in the name of Jesus And we declare her healed in the name of Jesus Satan the blood of Jesus is against you You cannot prevail over her life Father we thank you for healing from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet in Jesus mighty name Jehovah God for those babies. 
thank you, Jesus. We thank you in advance, Lord, for these children in the name of Jesus. For this womb shall carry children to full term yes. in the name of yes. Jesus. She will not have another miscarriage. Yes. For the Bible says we shall not bring our young before yes. time in the mighty name of Jesus. We, re we thank you, Lord, and we receive these children in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Daddy, we are calling forth Isaac, the son of promise. We are calling forth Isaac right now to come forth from this womb in the name of Jesus. Hear ye the voice of the Lord in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, for every need in the house, God, this great gathering of women... I pray that Jehovah, none of us will go home the same way we came. This conference was just to transform us, give us a new identity. We've already found our identity in Jesus Christ. I thank you for the hundreds of miracles that are going to flood this house. They will say Jehovah was good because we called upon the name of the Lord and he gave us a miracle. I thank you because every woman will receive a miracle in the name of Jesus because God you have brought, you have drawn us out of and now you are giving us a new name. We thank you and we bless you God. I thank you for this vision. I thank you God. I bless Pastor Kathy, Pastor and God Almighty. I bless the associate ministers, oh God. I thank you for the daughters of Zion, oh God, that these women will arise, my God, they will shine. These daughters of Zion will bring hope in our nation. Many women will believe again. Many women will be able to hope again, oh God. I pray the daughters of Zion will spread to the nations in the name of Jesus Christ, giving the women who have no hope a hope, oh God. Barren will bring forth, sick will be healed, cancers will be healed in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you because you are Jehovah. I bless your name. I decree two women with cancer. One is cervical cancer. The other one is a breast cancer. I curse that cancer from the root in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree a word that cancer will submit. Cancer will bow at the authority of God in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much. Oh my God, come on somebody give it up for my mother. Oh my God, somebody that has a new name today. Somebody that has a new name today. Somebody that knows she's a transformed woman from today. Somebody that knows her life will never be the same again from today. Somebody that knows it's reversed in the name of Jesus. That whatever they called you is reversed. Mom, we cannot let you go. We know what you carry and we know who you are we are not deceived you are a prophet of god and on top of that a general that we honor and respect and salute and it would be a sin for us to let you walk out of this house when we have a chance to be a blessing every woman under the sound of my voice get a seed Get a seat. Every woman under the sound of my voice. Get a, you can take your seat, yes. Get a seat. We've got to bless our mother. There is no way we can let a prophet of God just come in and out. Mm -mm. We are wiser than that. We are more taught than that in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody getting an envelope? Get an envelope. We, we, we just want to bless mom. We just want to put it at her feet and just be a blessing to her in the mighty name of Jesus. How many of you know you don't see prophets coming by every day? And not only that, the caliber of a prophet we are talking about, a mighty, mighty woman of God, a general of God. It's such a privilege and an honor. And mom, I thank you for that word. Thank you for, if you came for nobody else, you personally came for me. Because mom, about the intercessory, we didn't even know what you said. Many times, I, I won't even tell you where they sit. Because it's very embarrassing. <laughs> oh my, they, they are also looking at me. I won't look their direction. 
they are laughing their hearts out because they are like, oh my God, I wish we knew. You've taught us something, mom, that we'll never forget. And about Lake Victoria and River Nile, hello guys, can you imagine that we are a preserved nation? Mom, that revelation, oh my God, Whew, that we are a preserved nation because God remembers what we did with Moses. Isn't that amazing? Amen, somebody. When you're ready, just say, mm -hmm, uh -huh. Ashes, you let me know. And then we're going to. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame. Rising again, I'll bless your name. You are my holy. and just say Jesus so that they bring it here because if we all come to the front we're gonna be here forever okay so you're gonna give it to the ashes are you ready are you ready I want uh, you give it to the ashes you bring it here and then I, I just want to request my mom if you just just speak a prophecy over all of us just for God to, to just lift us up financially spiritually and in every way in Jesus name as we just put a seed at your feet is that okay my mom Thank you so much. So everybody, give it. Amen. Yeah, if you mean to clap, really do a good job. Amen. So if you're ready with your offering, put it in the basket and, and uh, the ashes are going to come around. You are my strength, my lion weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my holy. Precious jewel, Lord, to give Lord, up to and be a fool. You are my own. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Be a fool. You are my all in all. Everybody lifting up your hand and just call on Jesus.
by the time my mother gets here, they'll all be here. Because I see them coming down in Jesus' mighty name. Give it up for my mother. Come on, somebody. Have you been blessed this afternoon? Do you know that your life will never, ever, 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 ever be the same again? No, Pastor Kathy, as these beautiful women started bringing their offering, the Holy Spirit just put a word in me that great givers in this ministry have been going through a very difficult time financially the past four months. If you're among them, stand. The Lord just dropped a word that some of you, you are great givers. You love giving. God has called you to partner with this vision and support. But it's like you've been going through a dry season. It's like drought, famine, heat. And Pastor Kathy, you see, the ministry has been affected financially, but the word of God dropped that this month, this month, this month, Pastor Kathy, God is going to take them into a season of rest. Where financially, struggle will come to an end. Father, as you have spoken to me, almighty God, I thank you for every sustainer of this move of God. God, for every move, you call a people to sustain it. You call a people who carry the vision and the burden. For you just spoke to me for the past four months. There has been a shake up financially But today God you gave me a word That mighty God From this very day On the 14th day Every one of these people will be touching And holding a miracle Towards the end of the month They will come with their shrifts Giving thanks to God Worshipping you and saying Indeed God has been good to us I decree every brook that has dried in the name of Jesus Christ. Waters will start to gush out in the name of Jesus. God, for their businesses, mighty God, there will be no more struggles in the name of Jesus Christ. This month, they will mark it in their calendars. It shall be a month of rest, almighty God. And I thank you because by November, this church will be holding a great miracle of finances in the name of Jesus Christ to the glory of God. They will bless your name and indeed they will say it is the hand of God. It is not even the work of a man. It is not the hand of a man that has reversed it, but it is your hand. God, I ask you, that your people, God, when you open brooks for them, when waters will start to gush out, mighty God, when rivers will start to spring forth, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, they will not be foolish, almighty oh, God. They will be careful to bring back to the house of God that which belongs to God so that God, doors and windows will op be opened for them. I thank you, God, because you teach them to be faithful tithers. Lord God. I stand here as a prophet to decree to every one of you, sustain us of this move that watch out from the 14th day of this month. I don't know why 14th, but from the 14th of this month, wells will start to open, waters will start to gush out. People will give you things you don't even deserve. People will bless you with money that you don't even deserve. Oh, come on, somebody. I say people are going to bring to you. Businesses will start to blossom. Businesses. I see businesses will start to blossom. Some of you who are doing businesses will be so, so shocked. When people are shutting, you'll not even be able to cope with your customers. Come on, somebody. Understand when a prophetic season has broken forth. Come on, if I were you, I'll shout for it. Make a shout. Yes. Come on, rejoice. Yes. The brook, the brook that dried up is opening 
out. You are walking into springs. This is a new season. Tell your neighbor 14th. Tell them, check me out on the 14th. On the 14th day. Tell them, at the end of the month, I will have a mature testimony to bring into this house. I decree finances. Oh, come on, somebody. Give another shout. Give a shout of praise, somebody. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It cannot be otherwise in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to agree with the prophetic word and begin to declare it over your life and say it shall not fall to the ground. Begin to do business with God right now. Say, Father, I thank you for my word. It shall not fall to the ground. It shall be established in my life. I will walk in this place as a millionaire. Lord, I thank you because you're raising me financially like never before. My business is rising up from the ground, oh God. You're raising me up as a woman in the name of Jesus. My name is new creature. I am a new person in the mighty name of Jesus. Why don't you seal this moment in the spirit? Why don't you say that my life will never be the same again? Why don't you continue pushing in the spirit? This is the greatest hour of your life. This is the time of your turnaround. This is the time of your divine visitation. This is the moment that God intends to take you from where you are to where you ought to be. Right now in the spirit, it's on speed dial. Don't waste this moment. I know we are almost at the end, but just lift up your voice to the Lord. We are on speed dial. We are on speed dial. Whatever took you 10 years will happen now in this meeting. Whatever took 5 years will happen now in this meeting. Do not despise the stirring of the waters prophetically. It is your moment. It is your season. Maybe you are on the very verge of a nervous breakdown. I decree and I declare you are snatched back at this hour by the prophetic grace that has been released in this place. Mighty God, we worship you. Redeemer and King, we bless your name. We exalt you and magnify you. Who is like unto you? There is none like unto you. We thank God for such an awesome, awesome time in the presence of the Lord. Have you been blessed this afternoon? Have you been blessed this afternoon? Have you had your word? Not your neighbor's word. I know you're sorry for the people who did not come to the meeting. But are you transformed? You know, there comes a time in life when you have to be so radical, you have to be so focused, you have to be so determined. And when the women of God, generals like our senior mom, stand here and say that from today your name has been changed. Let me tell you, that's not the time to be cute. That's not the time to consult with human faculties. That's not the time to say, can it be? If God has said that your name is changed, I don't care where you're coming from. I don't care who you are. I don't care what life has done to you. I don't care what you've passed through. Your name is changed in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to look at a sister woman and tell her, listen here, baby girl, my name is changed. Uh -uh, if your neighbor is talking to you like she's doing you a favor, ignore her and go to one who is speaking prophetically and say, my name is changed. I know what I'm doing here. There's a woman who came here from the streets of prostitution. You need to open up your mouth and say, my name is changed. There's a woman who came here jobless. You need to open your mouth and say, my name is changed. There's a woman who came here barren. You need to open your mouth and say, hey, my name is changed. There's a woman who came here so broke. You need to open up your mouth and say, my name is is changed. There's a woman who came here sick. You need to open up your mouth and say, my name is changed. There's a woman who came here single. You need to say, my name is changed. We are standing in the very presence of the Lord. I want us to do two things today. Two things. Two things. I'm going to ask Pastor Anne to come and stand here by me. Just very quickly. Please rush, Pastor Anne. You're young. I want you to turn to your neighbor right now on my behalf. Please play it softly. It's a somber moment. And I'm going to ask you, please, do not walk out. You've stayed this far. We are about to conclude. Can I hear an amen? Nobody under the sound of my voice walking out. I want you to turn to your neighbor. 
And I want you to do the work of an evangelist. The woman of Samaria was able to turn around an entire town. I'm just asking you to speak to our neighbor. And ask them. With that compassion that senior mom has spoken about. That a transformed woman has compassion. She's able to hear and interpret even the cry of a child. She's able to look at her sister girl beyond her makeup and understand. You need more than just a hug and a smile. You need lunch. You need an outfit. You need a shoe. And you need a shoulder to cry on. Right now, I want us to have the compassion for souls. If you know that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that if Jesus showed up right now, you won't even have to have lunch before you enter into glory. I want you to have compassion for a woman who may be here. And